Muddy, 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 muddy. This is what I've been dealing with. We've had so much rain and it is so wet. This ground is just saturated with water. I have positioned these logs on the sawhorses as if I was standing on the inside of the cabin looking out. This being a wall, which is a seal log, the front of the cabin. B wall, which is the end of the cabin. And then C wall, which is the other seal. And D wall, which is the other end. And I want to talk to you a little bit about how I start off with this with a, a log with the layout. One of the first thing, well actually the first thing I do when I get the logs up here on the horses and get them positioned in their location, I like to use a wire brush and I'll just give it a, a good scrubbing. To scrub any grit or dirt or whatever that actually gets on the logs it, to clean them up a little bit. It, uh, it just makes it much better for your tools as you're working with a lot of edge tools that are sharp and if you can keep the material that you're working on the log itself as clean as you possibly can it'll make your edge tools last longer as you can see there's a wedge driven under the log in the center of it on the sawhorse there and there's room for this log to tilt either side i've driven another wedge on this end of it and what i like to do is just lay my level in the center of the log from end to end. You can see I've got it somewhat level there. If the log has a little bit of a twist to it, which can happen pretty easily in the sawing, I like to have the, the log level in the middle. And then I can go to either end, approximately where the shoulder of the notch will be, and I can lay my level up there and kind of check it to see what we've got as far as it being level. And we need to do this on either end because where the, where the notches go, those two areas on either end of the log have to be true or level with each other. And we'll take the level and we'll go back down to the other end. This is the tip of the log. And we'll go back down to the butt end and we'll check it down there. So there again, I'm laying it approximately where the... Uh, notch would set and you can see it's a little bit out of level so i'm just raising the level just a little bit and i have about an eighth of an inch that i need to take off of this side over here and that will bring it true with the other end now this is very very critical in doing this i'm going to go ahead and get my planer out and plane this seal log here behind me and clean the inside face up. It'll make it so much easier in doing the layout. So I'm going to get started planing. Sometimes it takes two or three passes to clean the log up to get all the saw marks off to make a nice clean surface for my layout. After I got through running the power planer down this log on the inside face, I came back with my level and I checked on either end. You can see I'm about a foot back or so from the end of the log and I checked to see how level it was and it had a little bit of a, a bump to it. So I took a hand plane I, I flattened it back down right in here and I take real light passes now I've got this where the inside shoulder of the log will be I've got it on the money and when you're planing with a hand plane doing this if you've got a little bit of a bump something you can kind of turn your level up like that and you can kind of sight under this edge here where you can tell where your high spots are and I'm going to take this hand plane and take some off of this side right over here. Now I've got it set real light so it's not going to cut very hard or very deep. I'm still a little bit heavy on this side over here. Just keep checking it. Just 
tiny bit more. Now that's pretty good. All right, now I'm ready to establish my center line on this log. And I just hook my square across it. And just looking at the end of the square, it looks to be about 16 inches. And I'm not coming out here at the end. I'm about, I'm back here where the inside shoulder of the notch will be. Because that, uh, this, this is all going to be cut off with the notch. And the bottom of this sill log will be ripped flat. But I'm going to make a mark at 8 inches. Now this is the same principle that we used uh, on the uh, round floor joist to get the center of them. Mark it at 8 inches again. Now I'm going to come in between that and that's going to be the exact center of the log. Now I'll just draw a little circle around that and I'm going to do the same thing that I just did there down at the other end and then I can snap a white line on that. It's going to pull the string straight up and get hold of it. Okay, I can establish my inside shoulder on this end. I'm going to have a two inch overhang on the notch and the logs are six inches thick so they would be eight inches and I've got plenty of room here to uh, put my my line on here for the inside shoulder control so I'm going to do that right now and I'm doing the same thing that I did on the uh, on the floor joist to get my mark I'm using the inside of the long leg of the square and bringing that onto the line right down on it making sure that I'm exactly on that line I'm going to make a mark across here. Then I'm going to flip the square and do exactly the same thing. Now, since I have the shoulder uh, mark established here, I can come back my 8 inches. I'm going to put 8 inches on that, on that shoulder control line exactly on it then I'm going to mark right here and then I'll be able to do the same thing as far as getting a, a straight line across there now this will be my cutoff this is where I'll cut the end of the log off with a chainsaw I'm using the same principle that I did on the round floor joist because this is a round part here but I can bring my square right up against this. I've got this square on the line and I can just lay that square on top of the, the log and just bring it right over there and just let it touch then get down here and just kind of look sight right across this edge here and I've got a little mark here move this out of the way and I can connect that and then when I cut this off with the chainsaw hopefully it'll be square with the face of the log well I'm not sure I had the camera turned on when I cut that so I'll try the other end all right I have my eight inches here off the end of the log there will be the two inch overhang then the six inch thickness of the log and I can hook my tape right on the end of the log there and leave it my square where it's at and I can check on my tape where my eight inches actually lines up with the eight inches on the square and it looks to be that I'm about the thickness of the line on my tape back from the eight inches on the square and I can go to the other end and I'm going to mark it 16.4 which will be 16 foot of the length of the building plus the four inches the two inches on either end for the notch overhang and then set back eight inches and get my mark to cut off the other end i 
I am going to rip the bottom side of this seal log flat and I'm, I'm coming down six inches from uh, my center line to where I'm going to snap a, a blue line where I can rip this with a chainsaw, this, this bottom off and make it flat. But I've measured down six inches from the center line to my mark and I did the same thing at the other end and I'm just going to snap a blue line on that and then we'll be transferring this this these two lines will be transferred down the end of the log to the outside face of the log but for now while I've got this in this position I'm going to go ahead and establish this this line where it'll be ripped tap that in there now I'm going to run to the other end and snap that I might should have bumped my line just a little bit and got rid of some of that chalk off there but I'll be able to see where to rip this and since I didn't come all the way out I'll just take my square put it up there give you a mark in the center of the chalk line like we do on the white line and I'll bring that all the way out to the end now it's, it's very critical that we don't bump the log at this at this point since we have it leveled up across here we want to make sure that this log stays still while we transfer these two lines down the ends of the logs and we'll do that with the level I'm going to transfer this line down and this line I'll transfer down and then when the log is flipped over I'll be able to snap those lines those center lines and the, the bottom rip line to the outside face of the log which this is the outside face is down right now I'll do this on either end this is the template that I'll be using this is a half dovetail template it's a piece of aluminum that's uh, oh nearly an eighth of an inch thick not quite but this is a one and three I'll bring this a little bit closer where you can see it. It's a one and three angle. And what that means, for every three inches in, it goes up an inch. So for six inches in, it would be going up two inches, which is approximately what we're going to have. Uh, the thickness of the log will cause that to vary just a little bitty bit. And I'll use this same template on every notch that I do on this cabin. I've had lots of questions, I say a lot, quite a few on notch layout. It, it may sound a little bit complicated. If you can see right here, there's a mark here and one right here. And that is, uh, I always like to put my tape on 12. That is four and a half inches up from the center line. This is the upper, I'm just going to write that on there so you can see it. This is the upper notch. And so I came up from the center line four and a half inches here and four and a half inches here. Now I usually come back to give myself just a little bit more uh, room when I'm when I'm uh, drawing the line. But I, it's this, this upper notch will just be a straight line across there. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw that while I've got it laying there. Get it right on it. Okay, this will be what I cut to with my chainsaw on the upper notch. Now there won't be a lower notch layout on this particular log. When I do the two end logs on the B and D walls, I will, I will go over this again for you. and explain hopefully a little bit better or a little more detail of what I'm doing and actually how you come up with this four and a half inches um, I've had questions about that how do you come up with a notch that you can use when you have different size logs well in doing this in each round of logs I try to pick logs that are the same or within a quarter inch of each other maybe three-eighths whatever of the midpoint and I went over that 
when I was showing you how to put a make a chart and put your logs uh, uh, information on the on the chart is I can go back to that chart and I can figure out where I want to put logs and also come up with this notch dimension now what I've done I started with 10 inches went through 18 inches at the midpoint and also and I figured all the the math out there's a column here that will have the upper and the lower notch dimensions what you come away from the line or up from the line or down from the line to get your notch layout and I always figure an inch in the chinking gap and that takes care for the most part takes care of little bumps or little curves or quirks that's in the in the logs but I'm going to transfer this line down to the outside face and since I have this center line that's plumb I can lay this on there and just slowly ease it down until I get right at that intersection right there and then draw that angle when we get this transferred down we can measure from this point that we'll have when we make the mark there and measure to the center line and then go back to the shoulder mark that we'll establish on the outside of the log and get the same mark the same measurement and just draw a straight line across there so for now I'm just going to transfer this mark with the one and three angle down to the outside I'm just put my level back on there it actually doesn't even have to be on that center line just as long as you've got it plumb yeah I'm not even on the center line with the level but I'm I'm holding the level plumb and locking it down with my hand and I'm sighting down that line that I made and I can just transfer that line right down the end of the log and this will all be waste here this will be what's, what's cut off now there again there won't be a bottom notch this bottom edge of the, the log will be ripped flat but this is the upper part of the notch it's just one angle but it, and it's flat and then when we do lay out the bottom notch we put this back on our center line and I would mark right along this edge here 